Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach, and you're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Coming up next, we've got what should be a good one between the Denver Broncos and the Baltimore Ravens. With that, let's get up to M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. There to call all the action. We welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, thanks. CA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Inner Harbor at M&T Bank Stadium here in Baltimore, Maryland. The Raven defense taking the field a few moments ago, and their all-time leading sack man, Terrell Suggs, was firing up the troops. They get set for what should be a good matchup with the Denver Broncos. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Out comes Case Keenum, made his first Denver start a winning one. In the victory over the Seahawks, 27-24, he was over 300 yards in that game. Three touchdown passes, great start for the Case Keenum era. The only uncharacteristic statistic for him, though, is he threw three interceptions. Guy only threw seven all of last year in a remarkable season with Minnesota. I think part of it is he's going to try and go downtown with Demarius Thomas, try and hit Emmanuel Sanders down the middle in the seams, maybe pressed it a little bit in a season opener. He'll take care of the ball better from here on out. Play action here on first down. And incomplete to open things up. The offensive lineup now, and the guy we highlight, Emmanuel Sanders. You can use him in any spot as a wide receiver. In the slot, out wide, it doesn't matter. He just makes plays. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Royce Freeman, the first carry for the rookie. Solid gain of 18 yards and a Denver first down. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. to Buffalo. They got back to playing Ravens football on that side of the ball, didn't they? Six sacks, which meant unrelenting pressure throughout the game, led to two interceptions for the Ravens defense. They look like the team that we're used to seeing when they trot out on the field. That game almost felt like a college game early season hmm. mismatch, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Everybody led it in this game for the Ravens. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. forward for three up to the 48. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Throwing on third down, Keenan. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. The 
these strong safeties, some people may not realize it, it's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is, because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. So on fourth down, here's Marquette King to punt it away. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Joe Flacco bringing out the Baltimore Ravens. And Flacco coming off his first three touchdown games since 2016. Did it in an effort where Baltimore just steamrolled Buffalo 47 to 3. Yeah, they just jumped on him in a big way. And there's a lot of pride going on in Baltimore right now. Missed the playoffs for the last five years. Joe Flacco, he got his job question because they took Lamar Jackson in the first round. So he came in rejuvenated. How about this new wide receiver trio of Michael Crabtree, Willie Sneed, and John Brown? All caught touchdown passes. None of them was on the team in 2017. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at the 20. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there. And it's second down. Baltimore's offense, we take a look at him here. You said it earlier when we were talking about Flacco that he really spread the ball around. He did. I mean, Allen had five catches, Sneed four, and then you had four guys with three receptions each. Yeah, and they all hit different spots, too, because Javorius Buck Allen, running back, had five catches. Receivers like Willie Sneed, John Brown, Michael Crabtree, multiple catches themselves. And two tight ends, Max Williams and Mark Andrews, had three each. So a nice job of Flacco spreading the ball around and involving everyone. Here's Flacco, and this is incomplete. There's one man we certainly have to talk about on this Denver defense from week one, and that is a familiar name, Von Miller. How about this for efficient, outstanding production? Six tackles for the game. Doesn't sound super remarkable, right? But it is six tackles. He had three sacks, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. Remember, he wasn't chasing around you. He wasn't chasing yeah. around me. <laughs> he chased around Russell Wilson and corralled him that many times and helped his Denver team win a big season opener. He could touch me with his pinky and I'd fall <laughs> over. <laughs> Third down. Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Von Miller coming in to drop it for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. The number two pick back in 2011, Von Miller still doing his thing. Boy, is he ever. If I were an offensive tackle, I don't know what I would do. I would tell the tight end he's got to stay in on all passing situations and help me out because he's got every move imaginable. One of the quickest guys off the ball in the league, and he's going to get to the quarterback. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Back deep, Adam Jones. Let's take it inside his own 40. 44-yard punt. They're going to wind up losing yardage on the return, though. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Denver's offense here, and you know, with their running backs, you kind of use that acronym that fantasy owners dread, RBBC, running back <laughs> by committee. I think that's what's developing in the Mile High City. Yeah, I think that everyone thought week one, Royce Freeman would carry the load, the rookie out of Oregon, because he had a big preseason, had passed Devontae Booker for the number of carries that he was going to get for the season, which would be considerable. But how about Philip Lindsay, the rookie out of Colorado? Let me repeat this, though. The undrafted rookie out of Colorado. 71 yards and 15 carries. Left Colorado as the Bucks' career leader in all-purpose yards. They thought he'd be a kick return spec. Got a man that's caught at the six-yard line. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage.
Well, that didn't take long. One play, and we're already looking at a first and goal situation. Keenum now to throw. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Eric Weddle. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball to their territory. from a season ago. It's Alex Collins. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. A gain of three, second down. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now, we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. On second down, Collins. And he'll find a little space. He gets us up near the 10. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Third and just one. It's Flacco. It finds Crabtree for the completion. A first down pick up there, Flacco to Crabtree. And the key number on that play, three. Third play of the drive, third down. Spectacular catch turns into a first down. First down saves him from a three and out. Play fake here on first down. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Doma Tapeco coming up the middle. Gets him there for a loss of about nine. Defense went 3-4. They got some push from the inside. And this is something in a 3-4 you don't normally get because the nose tackle who got the sack, he's usually responsible or ends up getting double teamed and sometimes triple teamed. How about him working his way back and putting the big guy on the ground? And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Flacco looks to throw. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. from the gun. Now he's going to go up top over the middle. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. A gain of 39 that time. Great pace.
positions in the pocket. Of course, it's easy to be patient when the protection's good, and it was. Yeah, you've got to pat those guys on the helmet and say thanks because they gave him plenty of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through the reads that he wanted to, and deliver the ball accurately. That was really well executed. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. He's going to air one out. And this is caught. Touchdown, Baltimore. Jordan Leslie, 52 yards. And the Ravens have taken the early lead. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happen. But they found the opening and exploited it. Justin Tucker for the extra point. The point after through the raindrops up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. So that drive in total eight plays. And it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Now Case Keenum and the offense heading back onto the field. And he had to be pleased at the start of the last drive. The offense was moving, but certainly not pleased at the end result and interception. And every team we ever talk to at some point in the conversation, the coach, player, someone talks about, you know, we've got to finish. We've got to finish off drives, finish off the game. There's an example there of not finishing, doing everything right, but not getting the result that you need. shake off the interception he'll look to throw and he hits his target Deshaun Hamilton and able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down Denver has the first down the play going for 15 yards I know many people like to throw to the tight end maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size the slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness their speed and their route running savvy This is Freeman on first and ten. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. 
can see this quite a bit on running Still plays with the guys out wide. A lot of times, though, it doesn't get caught. You're exactly right, because it's away from the play usually, so a lot of it goes undetected, but I know this will surprise you. I coach some receivers in the offseason. We work a lot on hand placement and blocking downfield. Might want to take that course. After the penalty, here's Freeman. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instinct. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. They'll run it now out of the gun. And so we're into maneuver. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. That one good for 12 yards. And that is going to set up a third and one. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fit and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Keenum going to throw on third and one. And he's going to be hit and taken down. Back right around the 48-yard line. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Here's Marquette King now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. The Ravens offense now. They get ready to head back on the field. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position. Led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are. But with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Flacco fakes the give, sets to throw. He uncorks it for Sneed. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. It's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from it. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. They'll run it now, out of the gun. So he got three and one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. All right, Brandon, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs... They're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. The Ravens on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and five. From the gun, Flacco. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. His first catch there. Good for 10 yards and a first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Yeah. 
Now Collins. And he'll get this up to about the 40. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Off play action. Flacco airing one deep for Crabtree. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Well, not that we had any questions, but it's obvious his arm does not hurt today, does it? He does not mind slinging it around. He is firing that big skin around the yard. Yeah, putting it deep downfield, taking shots. Unsuccessful there, but I like his moxie. The Ravens on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and four. To pass, Flacco. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes for the punt returner, after such a scramble, it sort of feels that way, doesn't it? He has it, he loses it. Somehow the ball finds his way back to him. Atone for his sin, and you know he's taking a deep sigh of relief right now. They'll run with Freeman here to begin the drive. And he'll power his way up near the 25. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, that was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just so quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. 7-0 is our score. We're back to Baltimore after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Bronco football to begin quarter number two. They'll come up on a third and four here to start things out. chance of winning this one. Here's Marquette King now as he's on to punt for Denver. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And it's fielded at the 44. That'll be a net of only 30 here. 40-yard punt, 10 on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Now Joe Flacco in the offense.
defense heading back out onto the field. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot. Maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and ten. They'll begin the drive with Collins. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Domita Pecco, the one to get him down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. Second down. And it's complete. It's Alex Collins. And he'll get it down here to the 43. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Flacco. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. the 42 only a yard on the pickup there so it leaves them needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker and what that means is his ability to read react and make a play but on that one he looked like one of those guys Flacco off play action this is caught inside the 15. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. We just saw him hit a big play there on a deep post. And most of the time, the post isn't available because you usually have defenders in the middle of the field. But if you throw enough curls and crossing routes and underneath routes, <laughs> I know from experience, they get tired of watching those balls get caught. They start to creep up a little bit, and that's when you can hit them big over the top. First red zone chance now for the Ravens. They've got it first and goal at the seven. They run with Collins, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Now Flacco. And the Broncos get there and take him down. second goal last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack but he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football had to eat it and ended up on the ground Flacco and the Ravens now, after the sack, need something good here on third and long. The 
The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Caught right side at Sneed. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So unable to convert for the touchdown inside the red zone, but they do come away with three. Yeah, it's a 32-yarder. That's essentially an extra point nowadays, right? Because it's 33 is a general rule for these guys. So it should be a simple kick. But you know what's really strange nowadays? When they miss an extra point, I think they carry that with them longer than missing a field goal because an extra point's supposed to be automatic. Absolutely, and I would think even field goals inside of 30 yards, even though they're substantially shorter than a PAT, it, it just has a different feel, doesn't it? A different it? feel, a different vibe. That's what I get from all the kickers I talk to. They always say, if I miss an extra point, that's the one that bothers me more. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. So the Broncos coming out now. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. It's Keenum. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Here's Keenum. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Keenum to Sanders for the Denver first down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook tough to defend because you think it's a go route and then he breaks it back on the comeback there's one other thing you need as well a well thrown ball exactly right you have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route they go play action here on first down so close to an interception. Read that beautifully. Got his hands on it. Couldn't get it. And it's second down. Well, partner, of all the great things that we saw in week one, unfortunately, there was some bad. Quite a few injuries. And the toughest one, Delaney Walker with that knee injury. He's gone for the year. Yeah, and that's really, really difficult for the Tennessee Titans to absorb because in a lot of ways, he's their number one target. He may play tight end, but he was the security blanket for Marcus Mariota. He'll be gone for the year. Greg Olson with the Carolina Panthers. He left the game in a walking boot, but an injury of the same foot that was surgically repaired last year. And then there's some other injuries like Leonard Fournette with Jacksonville, Marquise Goodwin with San Francisco, Deshaun Jackson with Tampa Bay, Doug Baldwin with Seattle, and don't forget Keanu Neal with the Atlanta Falcons. He got hurt, came back, left again. He's gone for the season as well with an ACL. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. But one thing's for sure, when you've got a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you're going to give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. The Broncos 
Packers on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. To the air again, Keenan. And he will have a man, Demarius Thomas. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. <laughs> Throwing again is Keenum. And with a flag down, he goes down. So they're able to sack him. Now the penalty looks like it could be holding. Let's find out. Holding offense. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all... Do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Now after the holding call, here's second and 20. Keenan throwing once more. He's got it, the tight end Jeff Hireman. And he'll be brought down, it looks like right at the 40. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. The Broncos on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and seven. From the gun, it's Keenum. And incomplete here on third down. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there and gets the good defensive position, able to affect the play. So on now is Brandon McManus. He has hit from as far away as 57, but that was in Denver. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this won't get there. Won't be on line either. It's no good. Off to the right, and this score will stay right where it is. Joe Flacco here. We get a peek at what he's done so far in this game. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with a quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. On play action, they'll throw. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Adam Gatsis in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Here's Collins. And some nifty running there. Ultimately, it doesn't get him a whole lot, but it does take him to the 45. Give him six on the run. They're going to be faced now with a third and 12. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Ah! 
Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And this is going to be incomplete. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force him into a likely punting situation. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Denver. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Now a handoff. It's Freeman. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. They'll run it now out of the gun. Takes this to the 27, give him four yards. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. On third and short, this is Janovich. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down. Well, there was a trust factor in that call. Turning and handing it to the big man in the backfield, trying to pick up the first down. But how about the defense? They were ready for him, and they were able to stop him. Here's Marquette King now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. This is taken at the 18. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10, right at the 30. The drive starts with a run by Collins. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to Baltimore after this. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. Second down, Flacco now. Caught by Snead over the middle. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. 
think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Flacco now just 8 of 16 thus far, 50%, but it's first and 10. Flacco from the gun. Looking sideline incomplete. But quite a few teams this past week in the NFL were playing with new quarterbacks, guys that have been in the league but in a new uniform. And they had quite a bit of success. You noted some of them. Who'd you have down? It's really incredible success when you think about it. Kirk Cousins in Minnesota won. Case Keenum in Denver won. Alex Smith with Washington won at Arizona. Pat Mahomes, he started one game last year. It was really a throwaway. His true debut on the road against the Chargers wins. And Tyrod, Tyrod, whichever. And the Broncos get there and take him down. And there's another sack for Bradley Chubb, and that's exactly why they drafted him. But don't discount his ability to play the run. This is a big, strong young man who understands offensive schemes, how they try to block, and he'll stand stout against the running game as well as continuing to get after the passer. Flacco and the Ravens now, after the sack, need something good here on third and long. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. road wins. The biggest surprise, no doubt, CD. How about Tampa Bay winning at New Orleans? Yeah, that was a big one because I'm not sure how many people really expected that. We looked at the schedule in preseason and thought, oh my God, for Tampa. At New Orleans, at home for Philadelphia, home for Pittsburgh. I figured an 0-3 start. If they won one of them, it would be great. Well, they got it on Sunday, winning at New Orleans. Washington at Arizona, Cincinnati at Indianapolis, Kansas City at the Chargers. All of them had big wins in week one. But didn't you think Chicago was going to pull it out? Oh, that was going to be a stunner. And if Chicago and the Saints had won, some elimination pools wouldn't have had many people left. Yeah, but Aaron Rodgers showed up before Chicago went home with an L. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Well, partner, they're not content to run this one out as we head towards the half, trying to hit a big chunk play right there and add to their score. And this is a confident group. At the very least, they're thinking field goal. Yeah, and I don't blame them one bit. I don't think you sit on the ball going into the half when you have a chance to put some more points on the board. On third down, it's Freeman. He gets it forward for four, maybe five, but the flags fly. And this one could be coming back. Holding offense. 
So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Here's Marquette King now. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Fielded at about the 28. So possession goes over here on the punt. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. So a good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10. Ready, ready, ah! Setting up to throw Flacco. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. He was looking for Nick Boyle that time. And that'll bring up second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. This is Collins on the handoff. So we're at halftime here in the Inner Harbor with the hometown Ravens on top. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We want to remind you that new this year in regular season games, I'll take you around the NFL, give you stats and scores from games in progress, as well as look back at games that have already been completed. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Here comes Grant on the return. Up come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half nice first half that we've had guys but be prepared for some change-ups we're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half see how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their own 28 yard line Flacco throwing middle but it's incomplete the tight end, Max Williams, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Uh, switching gears for a second, because you and I were talking earlier. We had some odd games in week one. I don't think anything, though, takes the cake quite like that game in Miami. How about that lightning delay? Multiple lightning delays. Yeah, when you open up the season in the state of Florida, and it's not a dome, good luck. You've got a chance of this happening. It right? happened in Tampa a couple of seasons ago, maybe a couple of times, if I remember correctly. This game wound up taking seven hours and eight minutes to finish when all was said and done. Normally, we do a game in three and a half or less. That's unbelievable. So great stamina for the fans, great stamina for the players, 
And how about our colleagues in the announce booth? Ooh. Great stamina for them yeah. as well. Indeed. Longest game in NFL history. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. Oh, he's got a man wide open to clean. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Inside the 40 to the 39. 10 yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. And down he goes. We are seeing two really confident defenses imposing their will on these offenses in this game. Yeah, absolutely going toe for toe. Just curious if one of these offenses can wake up a little bit. Is there any way they can find something that can pop something big to knock them back on their heels? Flacco and the Ravens now after the sack need something good here on third and long. From the gun, Flacco. Crabtree has it. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag. That guy should, can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him, too. Fracco now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. They pitch it out to Collins. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. The all-pro Von Miller there on the tackle. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. here on second down toward the center of the field but it's incomplete that one was intended for John Brown and it's third down we've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring flying around making plays on the ball and we see yet another errant throw as a result the Ravens on third down they've converted six times and could use a seventh here this is third and ten Here's Flacco. Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Picked off around the 27. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. Well, CD, looking back to last week, one interesting thing certainly was that tie between Pittsburgh and Cleveland. You know, that was the first week one tie since 1971. Yeah, I think our research told us that the Broncos and Dolphins tied 10-10. And remember, overtime was instituted by the NFL starting with the 1974 season. So this is unbelievable. Those two teams tied. Cleveland was plus five in turnover margin, had their chances, and got a field goal block down the stretch that would have won the game. Yeah, Pittsburgh had a field goal late in OT2, and they missed it wide left. The 
He'll try to get the ground game going with Freeman. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. And that's complete to the tight end, Hireman. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Keenum now just 7 of 16 passing thus far, but he's got a first and 10. This is Freeman. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. As we continue to advance in the NFL, as people continue to scout players, they really don't care as much about body types as they care about those guys who can make people miss, run through tackles, and gain all that additional run after catch. Anybody who has that ability, they want them on their team. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. From the red zone, it's Keenum. Incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Keenum. Rush coming and he's taken down. Terrell Suggs coming hard from that line. Spot, he drops him for a loss of 11. Enough takes a start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on the sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. on third down it's been a problem just one for seven thus far this will be third and a mile from the gun here's Keenum and that is incomplete a pretty good coverage there and both of these defenses they've had good coverage throughout this one no doubt about it and in today's nfl where we're used to a bit more scoring this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build who's going to make the big play and mcmanus able to put it through and they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. 
So a decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, <laughs> right? Hey, got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. The return man is Graham. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. And they'll run it here. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. They go again with Collins. He takes this for three to the 29. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Blacko looks to throw. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. The man's getting a little loose with the football there, right? Interception before, almost had one here. He's got to start taking better care of it. Yeah, really should have been back-to-back -back drives with interceptions. He's lucky there. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on for the fifth time here today. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. And that's what friends are for. Right. <laughs> As the returner, you know who you're buying dinner for later. Oh, without a doubt, because he just took care of you and your team in a big way. You know, you turned it over there. That's a big momentum changer and put your defense in a bad spot. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It's a loss of two, now third down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. 
That didn't happen in this case. That play got bottled up. The Broncos on third down. Just one conversion and eight tries. Not good. This is third down and 12. A shotgun snap for Keenum. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. But the fans should be applauded in this defense right now. That's an excellent job. They force a three and out, and they should be able to set up their guys with great field position, probably near midfield or better. Here's Marquette King now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Taken right around the 44. Called out a 46-yard punt, though they did get nine back on the return. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. Joe Flacco and company heading back out onto the field. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start. This defense, they've made some good adjustments, so he's fallen off since. Have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact they had a tough first half, he was locked in, right? Rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing him all sorts of trouble. First and ten, and Flacco looking to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's brought down. Ten yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. no gain on the play and it's second down he has elite instincts from his linebacker spot he's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage four down, four down. Check. Ah. Ah. on second down Flacco to throw firing quickly here and that's complete and this time not quite to the 30 he'll be down at the 31 yard line the reception good for seven. It's third down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. A second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. Here's Flacco. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. And he'll go down at the 28. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He made his first attempt, this from 45. That's complete to Williams out of the backfield. And this will depend on the mark. I'm not sure he pushed the line forward. And indeed, he did not. They stop him. And Denver getting set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Here 
Here's Freeman. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the past. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. Keenum to throw on third and one. Blitz coming and down he goes. I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. Here's Marquette King now, as he's on to punt for Denver. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore as we are just about set to go here in quarter number four. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their own 26. They'll run the counter with Collins. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back at New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Check, check, check. Yes! Yes! And again, it's Collins. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Now, it looks like a pickup of six. That leaves him with seven yards to go on third down. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time, the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself, and that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. Hey, hey, hey. Yes. Ready. Yes. Now it's Flacco. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. Here's Jones. They'll get nine yards on the return there following a punt of 42. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. The Bronco offense now set to come back out onto the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Keenum now on first. 
first down. Now he's going to go deep down the left side. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Keenum. Sanders has it over the middle. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays harder to move it. The Broncos on third down, not getting the job done at all. A very poor run for 10. This is third and four. Back to throw, Keener. And this is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Here's Marquette King now as he's on to punt for Denver. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They're out in front last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at the 20. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Second down, Flacco now. It's caught by Crabtree. the 45 23 yards on the play tell you what he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long that throw no different yeah a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw i think he looks at it as i can do it so it's not that big of a deal to me and i'm gonna keep firing like they've been on roller skates this entire game the way they've been pushed around six sacks given up in this one So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Hey, 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 hey. Ah, hey. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, 
That looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. And that is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it. Don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup. Bounce didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. And Denver getting set to take the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And down he'll go at the 25. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Second and five after the five yard completion on first down. Now Keenum. He'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. He finds an opening past the 40. And finally taken down at the 44-yard line. That goes for a gain of 31. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Working from the gun, Keenum. And he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. The sack cost him only a yard. It's second and 11. From the gun, it's Keenum. Throw left side, it's reeled in by Hamilton. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. Nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Reach it incomplete. 
After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. And movement by one of the Broncos up front, and in comes the flag. False start, offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to Still get a snap down. count. False start penalty, certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Shotgun snap for Keenum. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Going with a dime lift on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. The Broncos on third down. They've been stymied left and right. Converted only one time. This will be third and 15. Again, Keenum. And that will be incomplete as well. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, there in coverage. Didn't have a receiver up and downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. So on now is Brandon McManus. He has hit from as far away as 57, but that was in Denver. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. So without making excuses, you have to figure that this rain has had an impact now on both of his missed field goals. It's one of those situations really difficult to practice for and tough to prepare yourself against. It's just a whole different animal kicking in the rain, and we've really seen him struggle. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. Baltimore with good starting field position as they come up first and ten. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there. Second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Derek Wolf there on the tackle. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. And the Broncos go to a nickel set on third down. Yeah, they've got an extra DB out there. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. And he's got his man on the out round. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down when his way it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. 
but you and I both know. Well conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. They'll run it here. This is Buck Allen. They'll get it to the 23-yard line. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Well, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. They stay on the ground with Allen. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what we said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. So the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. And they'll run it here. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. How about this? Flacco setting to throw it. The attempt on the dive and he has it. What a catch. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Oh, 
the line of scrimmage once again the five as they get ready for second and goal they'll give it to him up the middle and he'll get in touchdown Baltimore Alex Collins a five yard touchdown run and the Ravens will add on to their lead Say that they are firmly in control right now, but I'm looking at your face and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two score game, you're inside of two minutes. I think you can breathe relatively easily now. Yeah, you can, but still, you got to stay vigilant. Can't give up anything cheap and easy that could put you in some jeopardy. Still, an important piece of business to take care of the extra point. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead is now 17 3. So that one along 11 play drive. And it's finished off with a five yard touchdown run. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. Now they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? On first and 10, Keenum. And he will fight a man here as Thomas comes open. 18 big yards on that one and a Denver first. First down now, but that clock rolling. On first down, Keenum. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line, unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. From the gun, here's Keenum. Fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. It'll be a gain of eight yards. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. Counting down toward a minute to go in this football game. Flag comes in. This might be a free play. He's got a man. It's Sutton that's complete. Offside. Defense. So with the completed pass and the yardage they got, they'll decline the penalty. So obviously more yards on the pass completion than they would have gained with the penalty. They did the math. They did it well, and it works for them. Maybe a critical mistake at this juncture is now they've got a first and ten. Again, they'll throw with Keenum. Over the middle complete. That's Patrick. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. And 
the spike will come with 34 seconds to go. sack in this part of the field it brings up third down it's a tried and true formula and i don't think it'll change for as long as we play football if someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough that's only going to help your defense yeah he's since being hurried he got rid of it before taking the hit but incomplete throwing on third down keenan oh the ball comes out on the hit but they'll say it's incomplete Tell you what, partner, after he ices down, he's going to be a nice long soak in a hot tub after this one. He's been under duress the entire game. And once again, hit as he throws. Fortunate that one wound up incomplete. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. And movement by one of the Broncos up front. And in comes the flag. False start. Offense. Yeah, maybe they were coming with a blitz that time and it caused a jump. I think if we saw it, you know that they saw it. Might have been a little discussion down there. Bad guys coming, pick them up, pick them up. And someone jumped. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now Keenum, got to have this one. And he is into the end zone for the touchdown. So they still need a miracle for the clock where it's at, but they get one piece to the puzzle done. Still have hope. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, yeah you know, it doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. McManus's point after is good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. That time, a nine-play drive. And it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. So they'll line up for the onside kick. 18 seconds to go. And this is going to be recovered by the hand seam. And that should just about put a capper on this one. They had to go for it with no timeouts remaining, though, now. This one's as good as over. They gave it an effort. They tried their best, did everything they could to try and get the ball on the onside kick. You're exactly right. They had to try it. It was their only option. And now this game is done. Just take it, kneel, and call it a day. To Anigo's Flacco, and that should be it. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game, but 
These two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Or I, you one of those guys I'm a little skeptical. skeptical, about it or little did you skeptical. Trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated. Because, you know, open air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.